Hi guys, Amy Marie here from the 2016 Ice Resin Design Team and today I'm going to be showing you how to patina metal using only heat, the Susan Leonard Casimir Art Mechanic Iced Enamels Medium and a stamp brusher pen. Now I know a lot of crafters out there either don't have a torch or maybe you're not comfortable using a torch yet. So I'm going to show you how to use your craft heat gun on some thinner 36 gauge copper sheet and get really good results. Then I'm going to show you an optional way to dress the metal up even further using a stylus, iced enamels relic powder and some perfect pearls. I really love all the possibilities available with this technique and I hope you will too. So let's go play. So as you can see, I have my heat gun, a pair of tweezers to keep from burning my hands as I hold the metal, a piece of 36 gauge copper sheet that I have cut into a circle. You can use scissors for this, um, metal cutting scissors, or you can use a steel roll die if you happen to have some steel roll dies laying around. They cut through 36 gauge metal or copper and brass really, really good. Um, I have an alcohol wipe to clean my metal off, to clean the oils from my fingers off. You can just use some alcohol and a paper towel or cotton ball if that's what you have. A makeup sponge to apply my iced enamels medium to the stamp with. And a stamp. When choosing a stamp, it's better to go with a larger design, something a little more simple. If you try to stamp a very delicate image or an intricate image with a bunch of fine lines, it's not going to work as well for this particular technique. Your metal shape might be a little bent up after cutting it or punching it out with the die cut because the metal is so thin. An easy way to remedy this is to just take your acrylic block and smush it like you see me doing here. If you do happen to have a die cut machine, you can place it in between your pads and shim it up and then just run it through the machine to get it perfectly flat as well. Work with what you got. If you do not have a block, an acrylic block, and you just use the stamps whenever you do your stamping, then you can take a pair of hardback books and lay it between the books and jump up and down on it if that's what you want to do, or step on it. Um, just get the metal flat enough to accept the stamped image well. Then you want to take your alcohol pad or alcohol soaked cloth and clean the surface of the copper where you'll be stamping and heating. You're basically wanting to remove any type of oils that may have come in contact with the metal, like from your fingers for example. If your copper is really dirty or oxidized, you'll want to clean it properly before starting this technique. In those instances, I like to use Penny Bright because it's fast, easy, and safe. You should be able to do a search and find videos on how to properly clean copper if it's really dirty. A piece that looks like what you see on your screen only needs the alcohol pad for what we're doing. Make sure it's dry. I used a paper towel and fanned it with my hand because I'm impatient. Once you've selected your stamped image, and I'm using this gorgeous sea turtle design by Inka Dinkadoo, you want to apply a small amount of your SLK Iced Enamels Medium to a makeup sponge or brush and dab it onto the image. It doesn't take a lot. You just want to get the medium on the raised surface of the stamp and not sloshing down into the crevices because that will give you a really goopy and blurry image. Though easy, if you're uncomfortable applying the medium to your stamp this way, Ranger does make empty stamp pads, so you could purchase one of those and add your iced enamels medium to that if you wanted to, but it's really not necessary, and I recommend trying it this way first. I promise you'll see just how easy it is and get it in no time. Wipe the excess off onto your no-stick worksheet or a paper towel and then stamp your copper and reapply the medium as needed if you add the stamp more than once. In this technique, it's very important to apply every stamp that you wish to show up in the heat patina before moving forward. You can't go back and add more later without cleaning everything off and starting all over. When stamping the copper, make sure to apply firm, even pressure. The great thing about iced enamels medium is it's very sticky, so it won't be as likely to slide as other watermark mediums might, but it can still slide if you're not careful, and you don't want to make a blurry image. So try to take your time and be careful. 
Mistakes do happen though, so even if you've done this a million and ten times, it could slide the next time you do it. If that occurs, or if you decide you just don't like where you place the images, don't worry about it. Wipe your copper down with more alcohol, dry it, and start all over. This is a technique that allows for as many do-overs as you need, so don't feel pressured and you just play until it feels right. And then go ahead and clean your stamp up before moving on to the next step. Now you're going to want to grab your metal sheet with your heat resistant tweezers in an area where you didn't stamp. If you've never worked with metal and heat before or have never used a heat gun before, please be careful. Even though we're not using a torch here, heat guns still get really hot and can burn. And this piece of metal is going to get extremely hot and will definitely burn. You will not want to be touching it with your skin during this process. You're basically wanting to heat the surface of the copper slowly from the underside. This way you don't burn the iced enamels mediums away before the metal has a chance to patina around it. If using a torch with this thin of metal, you'd have to be really careful to keep from burning it away quickly, but since you're using a heat gun, it's going to take a while. Please forgive my camera angles, trying to get to where the heat wasn't hitting any camera, where I had room to put the heat gun underneath the metal, and where I could still somewhat see what was going on wasn't easy. I can't really see my image right now as I'm working on this. That's why you see me pulling the copper away every now and then. I'm checking to see how far along it's come. As you can see, I have the heat gun a few inches beneath, not directly up against the metal. You'll see the copper start to change colors the hotter it gets, and it will take on a deep orange glow with hints of magenta and browns starting to show up. You might would be able to get some purples and pinks and blues if you keep going for a really long time. You certainly can with a torch, but I didn't when I did this one. Just keep checking and be prepared for it to take a while. Hopefully you can see the image beginning to show up in the camera. I know the glare of the lights makes it a bit difficult. You can pull the copper away like you see me doing and check and then let the color build a little before reapplying the heat. Like so many creative endeavors, this is a dance and once it really starts to color, you can hold your heat gun in specific areas for a long amount of time to make color bloom in that one spot. This is an effect that you'll want to play with so that you can really get a good feel for what the copper will do. I even recommend doing a search on YouTube for a copper heat patina and you'll see jewelers and metal workers using a torch to achieve stunning colors on the copper. You won't be able to achieve quite as many colors as they do because you aren't getting the metal as hot, but you can see that you'll still achieve some really beautiful results. I'll zoom in so that you can see the stamped image really well. Isn't it cool how it appeared just like magic on the metal? I think it's so beautiful. Um, I love the magentas and the oranges that really show up. And then once it's like this, once it's where I want it, I like to just set my copper aside onto a heat resistant surface or I'll hold it in my tweezers for a handful of seconds to a minute before dunking it into a little bowl of cool water in order to cool it down and then once it's cooled down with the water I just dry it off with a paper towel. You don't have to worry about smudging the image away as you wipe it dry. It's just so pretty isn't it? Once you've heat patinaed your image, if you'd like to make it pop even more, you can dry emboss it with a Teflon tip tool like this one used for embossing metal. You just need to put a piece of foam or a mouse pad beneath your metal while you're following along the lines, and then you just trace the lines that you've stamped. Because of the lights and my difficulty in seeing at distances, I can't really see what I'm doing, so I'm going to finish it off camera. But you can draw as simple or as intricate as you'd like, and there's lots of videos on using this technique with metal sheet. It's a whole lot of fun to do. 
I chose to emboss and deboss by working on both sides of the metal, but if you don't have the tools for it and you just want to give it a try, you could literally use an old ballpoint pen that's ran out of ink and take a pair of blue jeans that you've folded up several times to lay beneath the metal for just enough cushion to get it to emboss. If you want to practice first, you can even cut up a cola can and flatten it out and then just draw away until you're comfortable. This is the finished image after the dry embossing and debossing. But wait, there's more. Yes, for a final embellishment to the metal, if you really want to go all out, you can add the iced enamels relique powders to add a pop of color and extra dimension to your beautiful copper design. I'm creating my own unique color by mixing some of the Relique powders with the Perfect Pearls. The Perfect Pearls will add just a hint of shimmer to the Relique powders once it all melts together and you just mix them up in a small jar um, to create that unique blend and then you'll have it to use in the future. So now I'm taking some of the Iced Enamels Medium and the same makeup sponge as before and I'm just dabbing it onto the outer perimeter of the copper circle. I'm kind of sloppy with it. I just want this to end up being a really colorful edging. And so once I have it going around the entire circle, I sprinkle some of the um, Relique and Perfect Pearls mixture that I created around the edge and once I have that entire edge covered I take the extra powders that are still on the copper and kind of you see me tapping and shimmying it just to kind of get those extra little powders falling into the embossed image where the sea turtles are and once it's to my liking I hold it with a pair of tweezers and um, heat it up from the underside with the heat gun. You see me making a pile of embossing powders there because as I heat it up and the powders melt I'm probably going to end up dipping the edges back down into the surface to try and get a deeper green line. Once the powders, once the metal's gotten hot enough that the powders stick, you don't have to worry about heating it from underneath because they'll stay. So you just kind of blast it from underneath real fast and then I go ahead and heat it on top or from the edge. I decided a copper edge would look a lot better for the project that I was working on, so I dumped some of the torched copper relique powders onto the center of my paper heated the circle up around the edge and then just dipped the edge in like you saw me doing previously with the chartreuse mixture creating this thick puddle of metallic yumminess framing my design all you need to do is heat a section up on the edge dip it in melt it and then heat the next section up until you finish the entire circumference of your circle And then this is what your finished piece looks like. Thank you so much for creating with me today. Visit my blog at fromthebreathofdaydreams.com if you'd like to see other ways my muse inspires me. You can go to iceresin.com if you'd like to see a tutorial on how to create my purse. And you can also find other mixed media projects from this year's design team and past design teams there. Or you can go to rangerink.com to purchase any ice resin product. May your me shine brightly. Bye.